Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Kareem Sirajuddin, founder of Nude Human Consulting and the Coffee with Kareem podcast. Thank you all for joining. Another lovely live webinar brought to you by About Islam. Thank you, About Islam, for having me again. It's my honor. Today's discussion, we're going to be talking about enhancing masculinity. And uh, it's a big topic, but I'm going to, you know, start chipping away at it today. Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So the first step I wanted to take for today's discussion is right out of my lovely Quranic dictionary. And I recommend everybody get one if you don't have one. Uh, it's one of the things I often do is look up words that I find in the Quran that I don't know. And over time, vocabulary builds. And this is very important for everybody, um, as I mentioned in Ramadan when we did a live webinar, you have to know the meaning of the Quran and what you're reciting, at least in prayer, or else it's not going to impact your consciousness and your heart in the way that it's meant to. So uh, it's an investment that will amplify returns until you die. So let's remember to always do that. This, this particular one is called the Dictionary of the Holy Quran, and uh, it's, uh, the author is Omar. So you can also find PDFs of it online. So what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read the Quranic definition of Rajulun. Rajul means a masculine man. And male in Arabic is Dhakar, which is connected to the word, uh, same root for Dhikra, which means to remember or recall, which is interesting. But we're going to focus on Rajulun today. And what does this mean? And those of us who speak Arabic, we may already feel like we know a word that sounds like this. I'll give you a hint. It's one of your body limbs. Uh, it's your foot. You know, rijlak, your foot in Arabic. Or rijli, my foot. So rajul is connected to the same word for foot. Now here's the meaning of the root or the variation of it. Because as we know in Arabic, you have a, um, a pair, uh, triletter, triletteral root usually, sometimes two and, or four, but mostly three letter roots and those branch out into different forms and variations of the word and the meanings um, change in their shades but fundamentally they're all still linked so we're going to hear that today when i review this with rajulun so rajila or rajala means to go on foot to urge with your foot to walk to tie by the feet let a female suckle her young, be set free from his mother. That's what we're going to focus on today. It also means to comfort anyone, rajala, to comfort anyone, to comb the hair, to grant respite. Tarajala means to go down without a rope. Rijlatun is vigor in walking. Rijlun is foot or soldier or good walker. And there's also meanings that suggest hunters, a hunter, a male human being, a man, and a person with air. In other words, a person with children. So those are meanings that come and spring right out of the Quran for us, or the, the word rajulun, which is used in the Quran. And uh, the word, um, with all its forms, is mentioned approximately 73 times in the Quran. So already there we get some, some interesting meanings and a lot of, you know, universal meanings. And one of the things I want to focus on is to be set free with his mother. This is one of the facets of distinguishes a boy from a man. And unfortunately today we do have a lot of boys and girls living with mom and dad and then they leave the house uh, and literally jump right into a marriage and they're expected to run their own household and start a family. And then there's a lot of issues. So we're going to talk about being free from your mother and what this maybe implies. So the first thing is that every man needs to understand that there are two umbilical cords that have to be cut. The first one is cut for us at birth when we are born and there's a doctor, right? But the second umbilical cord that isn't usually cut for some people and something I've observed with people I've worked with is the psycho-emotional umbilical cord. Right. It's like we're still, you know, being yanked by mother or, you know, we don't have that real sense of freedom. 
This is why by definition it says in the Quranic dictionary to be set free from his mother. This is one of the ways you know you're a man. So how do we know <clears throat> what are the signs that we still might be in a sense whipped by our moms still? Here are some of the things that we should be aware of. One, you believe you must obey your mother no matter what. And if you don't obey her, it's equal to sinning. There are people who think like this. Like they can't do anything without mama's clearance, right? Mom has to approve. Mom has to like it. Uh, this is, of course, unhealthy and it's not going to help a person become you know, their own. And as we heard in the definition, a lot of what being a man is, is being on your own two feet, walking with vigor. In other words, you have direction, you have purpose, you know what you're doing. And uh, part of being a man is you have to discover and forge your purpose, your particular purpose, right? There's a universal purpose that all humans and jinn are um, guided and commanded by Allah to, uh, to consider, but that's a choice, right? Um, but for those of us that do accept that, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, we also need to have our own particular purpose, okay? And we're not going to be able to really do that if we're still whipped by our moms. So the person believes that they have to obey them no matter what, and if they don't, it's equal to a sin. And oftentimes, people are under the impression that, well, I thought I was supposed to obey my parents, especially my mother, like no matter what, this unconditional, you know, unwilling obedience even, right? But um, often the references that are used for that are uh, verses in the Quran that refer to the parents. And it says, you know, people say, oh, but my, pa my mom told me, the Quran says you have to obey me. Actually, it doesn't say that. And I'd like you to show me the proof if I'm wrong. But from my research, the verses that are often quoted is Bilwalidaini Ihsana. And that means with your parents have Ihsan or treat them with the most excellent or best way. Now, this certainly includes obedience from time to time, right? Especially when you're younger. And again, I'm addressing people that are you know, you're of age, you know, you're um, maybe you're in college or you're working and you're living at home. You know, we're talking maybe, you know, 18 and up. We want to start thinking about these things because you have to start cultivating these things from now. So the, the point is that having excellence with your parents doesn't mean you have to obey them no matter what. And here's my argument for that. Number one, what if your parents aren't Muslim and they command you to do stuff? You can't obey them no matter what, because what if you're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that situation, right? For instance, your mom says, go buy me a six pack or go buy me some lottery tickets or, you know, go do this and go do that. And these things are haram. OK, so that doesn't work because we know that all the first generation of Muslims were converts and many of their family members were still mushrikeen or kuffar. So they couldn't just obey them no matter what. In fact, they did the opposite. They went with the Prophet ﷺ and stood on the other side uh, facing their father, their uncle, and their mother, and sometimes, uh, you know, both, right? So having ihsan with your parents means that you have excellence and character and conduct and you respect them. That doesn't mean you always agree with them, right? Especially you always agree with mom. So you're allowed to actually consider or evaluate and respectfully receive feedback from parents and mother. However, that doesn't mean you have to always do what they tell you. And again, I'm not talking about if you're 18 or you're, or you're 7. I'm talking about men, people in their 20s and 30s who are still functioning like this. Second thing is, um, the mother is the reason why you don't do most things and the reason why you do most things, right? So you study what you study because mom told you to. You have to be a doctor. That's going to make me really proud. And you basically have no other option except to be a doctor because if you aren't one, I'm going to, you know, disown you or disapprove of you and I'm not going to love you or treat you well. Unfortunately, this is a dynamic that some people experience. Or you have to marry the person that I choose for you despite, you know, compatibility or whether or not you got to know them long enough, right? And people have told me this, like, oh, I married them because my parents told me to, or they said you should marry this person, and I wanted to make them happy. And, you know, two, five, ten years later, they're, you know, suffering because it wasn't actually a rational decision, right? And third, you are a person who doesn't realize that your mother uh, is a human being, right? All humans have mothers, 
and all mothers are human. You know, all human mothers are human. And by definition, a human being is someone that has flaws, that is imperfect, that will make mistakes, that can be selfish, they can have, you know, um, unhealthy judgments and criticisms, they could even be immature, they could have unprocessed trauma, which affects their emotional and intimacy systems. I mean, the list goes on, right? So moms are not perfect beings, and they're not definitely uh, more superior than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what do we do in a situation where, let's say, my mom's not commanding me to do something haram, but she is telling me I have to do something that I really don't agree with, and from my understanding as an adult male, uh, it does not seem practical or smart at all, right? For instance, let's say you are, you know, the next artistic genius that your country has seen. And if you pursue, you know, arts and graphic design and all these ways that you can give your gift, remember, Allah created you, and he created your parents, and Allah is actually the one that owns everyone. Nobody owns anybody else. Your mom doesn't own you, your dad doesn't own your mom, and so on, right? It's all owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means that we also have to have a purpose or a role or contribution that transcends family politics, right? Or else we're not living our fullest destiny as perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended it to be for us. And this is why a lot of people stay stuck, right? They want to go in this direction with their career, but you know, and they have all this talent and all these things going on, but mom says, no, you got to be a doctor or an engineer or else I won't love you. You know, I mean, that first of all, I mean, that's just really heartbreaking, but that stuff happens. So the man is not a person who constantly needs clearance for every important or even little thing uh, that they're going to do in their life, right? And I've seen, for example, men in their late 20s or even 30s and they are in pursuit of marriage and they are really, you know, istikhara, everything checks out. It's a good person. It's this, it's that. Um, a good iman and the woman, a good family and so on. And because mom doesn't like her, you know, he cancels it and breaks her heart and breaks his own heart. And some people do this more than once, right? And then they develop all this resentment towards their mother and they still are trying to make her happy because they have now made, and this is point number four, they have now made my happiness is synonymous with mom's happiness. And if mom isn't happy, I can't be happy. I'm not allowed to be happy, right? Again, this is the umbilical cord that needs to be cut right later in adulthood. And if this is the case, then in a sense, you are going to worship your mother. She will become a type of tarut that you put on this high pedestal from the heavens, that it means even if you know between you and Allah, you're oppressing a person by not marrying them or oppressing yourself by not studying what you feel Allah designed you to study and go contribute that value to the world. You're actually making your mother in a, a partner in association with Allah, right? And again, I'm talking about extreme cases here where people are, you know, certain males are stuck. They can't, you know, break free from this mentality. And lastly, what we have to also remember is that a, a man has to recognize there's a difference between what you can do and what you're willing to do. For instance, some people will talk to me and say, what do I do, Kareem? I'm in this situation that you're describing, right? And I say, well, you can do X, Y, and Z. Now recognize it's not going to always be easy. There's going to be tension. You have to approach it with, you know, strategic wisdom, right? You can't just be a jerk to your mother because remember, Allah says, بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا You have to have ihsan with your parents. So how do you be respectful when you disagree with your mother or father? How do you, um, you know, show courtesy and that you listen to their advice and feedback, even though you're not going to do it or follow it because it just doesn't quite fit your understanding of yourself or what is best for you to come next, okay? So you always have to remember that there's a difference between what you're willing to do and what you can do. And if you're not willing to do the different strategies or approach things differently, the cycle and the pattern that keeps you stuck is going to repeat itself. And often I hear, but I can't do that, Brother Kareem. I'll make her sad or I'll make her upset and this and that. And I said, well, isn't she already upset? you know, about a lot of things that you haven't done yet that she wants you to do. Or every time you do what she asks, uh, 
she doesn't always uh, become happy later. She's still demanding more things or telling you you've got to do this this way. And if you don't, for instance, you know, a man refuses two or three women that he, he actually wanted to marry and invested time in to marry the woman that his mom chose him because she, you know, guilted him and told him, if you marry someone else, I won't show up to the wedding and I'll never talk to you. And so he ends up marrying the woman mom told him to. And then the whole, and then after the marriage, mom's constantly criticizing her. Oh, she's not good. She doesn't know how to cook. She's like this. Did you see the way she talked to me? And then she's still judgmental and critical. The point here is, gentlemen, that a mother who has this mentality, and again, not all moms are like this. Some moms are fantastic. And they really bring out the best of masculinity in their sons. But the moms who are like this, it doesn't matter what you do. You're never going to win. They won't be happy with you. Because they themselves have this inner emptiness. They are incomplete on the inside. And one of the ways that a person who can't find their own inner validation or purpose or fulfillment will try to do it through others, right? It's like you're the means for my sense of success. So I can go and talk to my friends over tea and show off and tell them how my son's a doctor and look at who my son married and my son did this. And you also have this mentality of the mother. She's constantly comparing you to everybody else. Sounds familiar, right? Because the mentality here isn't about relating to her son as he is or bringing out the good in him that Allah put in him naturally um, and really be proud of that. Rather, it's trying to constantly shape you and mold you into her fantasy of the ideal or perfect son. This is very unhealthy. It's unrealistic. And it's actually disrespectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're not honoring how Allah created a person. And that doesn't mean we don't work on our flaws. No, we all have to work on our flaws. But the difference is you can't be in denial if it's so clear that your son is going to be a fantastic artist or an engineer and you keep fixating on he has to be a doctor, right? So what do we have to do about all this? Number one, <clears throat> in order for your relationship not to be this constant you know, pattern of I'm responding to my mom's demands or wishes and emotional uh, reactions to things if it doesn't go her way, the first step you have to do is you have to establish uh, consistent communication and connection with your mother outside of those sensitive topics. So for instance, if the topic around marriage or what you should study, or if you already married and the topic of your wife is a big pain point for you and your mom, then you have to increase in your connection and intimacy with your mother in topics outside of them. So for instance, instead of calling your mom to complain or about your wife or about how you're not marrying the person you want, maybe you can try communicating with your mother about things that interest her or show her that you also care about her hobbies or interests or the way she thinks. And this can be simple things like, Hey mom, how you doing? Tell me about your day. Oh, did auntie do this? Oh really? My cousin had this happen. And you're just sharing, you know, the news, which is often what a lot of people do when they speak to their mothers. They inform them about the people in their lives and their news and their updates. And the point here is that you want to enhance and increase your connectivity and intimacy and safety with your mother. Because if she starts to also feel that you want to understand who she is as a person, and I would even ask things about her past, like, hey, mom, tell me about when you were in school or college. And, you know, what, what did you dream about becoming one day? Right. Because sometimes some of our mothers actually didn't get to pursue their dreams and purpose in the fullest sense. Right. They got married very young and, you know, became a wife and a mother which is a very uh, sacred and important job. But let's say your mom always wanted to be a doctor and she couldn't. She's now going to project that need or that desire um, and try to live it through you. So by trying to connect with your mom more consistently around not these big topics of sensitivity, and you really just try to understand your mother as the human being that she is, then maybe it will increase the chances of her seeing you as the human being that you are. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is you also have to recognize what you're willing to do and what you can do. And the bottom line is this. Constantly doing what your mom tells you to do is uncomfortable and can be stressful and can cause a type of suffering for the male. And challenging your mother and respectfully declining 
you know, certain demands that you feel are not fit for your life and path forward is also going to be d uncomfortable and stressful and suffering. But you, a man has to ask himself, if I die tomorrow, what would I rather meet Allah with? Which story, right? The story that I keep going against my inner truth, my authenticity, uh, what I sincerely and genuinely understand to be the best course of action for me? Or do I just listen to mom and that way I'll be all good, right? Because even your relationship with mom isn't authentic if everything you do is just this unwilling obedience, right? Because you have been conditioned to think you have to do it that way. That's the only way you're going to make your mom happy. Remember, not all moms are created equal and not all moms deserve to constantly be happy because that's not the case for any human being. We're not, nobody's going to be constantly happy with what everyone else around them does, right? So um, a mother that you obey, um, you have to also consider the criterions or the standards of who your mother is, right? And again, respectfully, if your mom doesn't have an education past 12 years old, she may not have the most complex of thinking or strategic way of approaching things, right? If your mom has gone through trauma on her own or her own issues with her father, right? She's going to have certain unprocessed trauma that is affecting her personality and the way she judges and perceives things, right? So you have to also remember as a man that your mother has her own baggage, let's say, right? Some of it is good and some of it is bad, like all of us. And that you have to recognize that she's not always making the most informed decisions for you, okay? Sometimes she is and sometimes she's protecting you and sometimes she sees things that you don't see and that's why بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا you have to listen, you have to hear her out, you have to take in her knowledge. But you also have every right to challenge it and, and ask her, you know, why do you feel strongly about this? Because I don't see any evidence or reasons why I have to go this way versus going this way. When this way is actually everything that's being made easy for me, I'm succeeding. And I, in my heart and mind, this feels like the track to go, right? So that's part of being a man is forging your own way and finding your purpose and never compromising your principles and your truth and your inner wisdom to appease anybody else, right? Especially your mother or your wife. Why? Because your wife especially won't respect you over time. If every time she challenges you, you bend, then what substance and what core do you really have holding you together? If this is the case, right? And Spouses need to respect and trust each other and feel that security. I'm not going to feel secure in somebody who's constantly changing their minds every time I challenge it, right? So sometimes you have to make, change your decision, especially if, you know, your wife or your mother have substantial evidence, uh, you know, from reasoning, from science, from Islam. And you're like, you know what? I got I to gotta change my mind because I actually think you have a superior you know, position about the matter. That's also part of being a man. It's not about being stubborn and defensive and arrogant and, oh, you're just a woman, you don't know anything. No, that's not manly at all. Part of being a man is also being humble and recognizing when they're wrong and taking responsibility. That's one of the biggest things that defines a man is being responsible and accountable, right, for your actions and planning your life track with responsibility and accountability consciously and this is why that first point that we discussed today of being set free from your mother how can you really take on your own responsibility and accountability if you can't make any of your own decisions you have no assurance of your own thoughts you don't have the courage to do anything without mommy approving right you're not going to get far and you're certainly not going to be fit when you get married right even if you're 30 and have a beard and what have you and make money you're still a boy inside you're not a man because a man is somebody that can see if I know I'm right. And this is something we see with the prophets. I don't care if the whole world's against me. I'm going to do it. Right. And I'll say this. You're not always going to be right either, of course, because, again, you're human. But I say it's better the mistake of not listening to your inner gut or inner wisdom and being wrong is still better than the mistake of not listening to your inner wisdom at all, right? Because there you lose twice. You don't have trust in yourself 
and you're not able to forge or come up with your own pathway and decisions autonomously. If you start listening to your own gut and your own reasoning and tr testing and tweaking that in your life, that's actually the path through the mistakes or through recognizing, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, right this time, but I really thought it through and here's what I learned. This is the process of you enhancing and growing in your maturity and responsibility. You gotta scratch your you know, existential elbows and knees or else how are you really gonna develop confidence, courage, assurance of yourself? And that's what's gonna, re that's the recipe to become a true responsible and accountable male one day. So that's my um, sharing for today. Again, it was the theme of being set free from your mother is one of the definitions of rajulun uh, in Arabic and in the Quranic terminology that we reviewed at the beginning. Uh, if anyone has any quick questions uh, or comments to make in the last few minutes, please type that uh, right away. Thank you. All right, so next time, inshallah, uh, we can continue with this theme, and I would like to review some of the other um, definitions that came up that we read. So today we just discussed being set free from his mother. Next time we can maybe go more into some of the other terms, which was part of being a man is you allow, you let females suckle their young. So this is idea of protectiveness, security, providing. Um, it is a man who is... Uh, able to comfort anyone, which is really interesting because you don't often, you know, associate manliness with emotion or tenderness, but that's one of the definitions. A part of being a man is knowing how to comfort anyone and to grant respite, right? To forgive, to be compassionate and to understand. Again, these are all things we saw in Rasulullah who was the, you know, pinnacle of human possibility and possessed the 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 pinnacle um, or the best um, powers of both the masculine and feminine qualities. So next time, inshallah, we can go more into those shades of the meaning. And I hope today was uh, valuable. Thank you all for your patience. If I made any mistakes, it's from myself. And if you got any benefit, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thanks again about Islam for inviting me. Don't forget to check out nudehumanconsulting.com if you'd like some personal or relationship growth and the Coffee with Cream podcast where you can get free tips and wonderful conversations. See you next time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.